hey guys, so maybe you are interested in building your own home studio or you know, Christmas is coming up. Maybe you have a friend or a loved one and you are interested in purchasing some things for them to help them start their own home studio. And you're like, Ed, I've been looking around and there's all kinds of equipment and stuff out there. Some of it is very expensive and some of it is not. And I just frankly don't know what I need. I don't know what to get. I don't know what to do to start my own home recording studio. And um, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to show you some of the things that are in my studio and talk to you about the different things that you're going to want to invest in to successfully have your own home recording studio. Uh, so let's get into it. Before we do, cue the short intro. At McRae Music. So you want to have a home recording studio. First thing I want to do is just offer my sincerest condolences to any of you who are dating or are married to a producer or an engineer or somebody who wants to, you know, who's into that kind of stuff. <laughs> because such as my my lovely, sweet, sweet wife right here. Because we're we're impossible to shop for because everything is always expensive and it's just it's. It's a mess. Well, honey, what do you want for Christmas? Well, there's this microphone, but it's like fifteen hundred dollars. So I don't know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I offer my sincerest condolences and apologies if uh, that's where you are. <laughs> all right. Um, but in all seriousness, there are several things that you're going to want to consider when building a home studio. Now, the first thing that you always want to consider always is smashing that like button for the YouTube algorithm. So go, go, go on and do that right now. You know you want to. Click that like button. You'll feel better about yourself after you do it. All right. Um, but when it comes to your home recording studio, the first thing you want to do is just sit down and make a list of what is it exactly that I want my studio to do? What do I need to be able to do in my home studio? Because there are many different things you could do. Maybe you're just producing music and that's all you care about. Maybe you're just a songwriter and you just need a space to kind of flesh out your ideas or maybe even record a demo that you're sending to someone else. Maybe you're going to be a mix engineer and people are going to send you stuff and, and you're going to mix it for them. These are all things you need to consider because they're all going to play a part in determining what kind of investment you need to make and what kinds of equipment you need to get to facilitate the needs that your home studio is going to have. Now, the first thing that I think you wanna do when you get ready to start investing in stuff is you wanna invest in the space itself. I know, I know, it's not sexy, right? To, you know, you wanna buy a, a microphone or do other things, but if you don't spend the right amount of time and investment in your space, it can actually work against what it is that you're trying to do. Now, when I say considering your space, I mean considering the actual room that you're gonna be in. Ideally, you wanna be in an enclosed space. Now, when I first started, I was not in an enclosed space. As you can see right there, that is not an enclosed space. I was just kinda just in the middle, in between my living room and my kitchen, and that's just the space that I had at the time. Ideally, you wanna be in an enclosed space uh, with a door or something where you can kind of control the sound a little bit more. And then you want to consider getting some type of treatment for that room. So you're going to go in the room and just make some noise in the room. Just sing in the room, yell in the room, and just see how ambient the room is. Are you getting a lot of echo and reverberations? Or, you know, maybe the room is already kind of dead. Maybe you have a carpet already in the room and there might be insulation in the walls. And, you know, maybe it's not as echoey where you don't have to do a ton of stuff. Some of the things that you can do to treat your room are you can get acoustic foam uh, panels. And if you are not going to be mixing in the room, and so you're really mainly concerned with just kind of dampening or deadening the room so that you don't have so much reverberation in your room or in your recordings, then your acoustic foam panels can work for you. You can go on Amazon. Here's an example right here. If you look on screen, you can see an example of some acoustic foam panels that you can get depending on how large your room is, right? That's going to determine how many you need to get. That's a good, great place to start. All right, you can do that. Now, 
in my studio, and if you're going to be a mix engineer or, or do anything where you are really concerned with what you are hearing, right, um, I think that you might want to go more with acoustic panels. Now, you can see in my room, I have acoustic panels on my wall in my listening area. There are also some acoustic panels behind the shot that you see there that, you know, you cannot see. I also have what's called a ceiling cloud. You can see on the ceiling, I have other acoustic panels. And the reason I have that set up is because as a mix engineer, I'm very concerned with the frequencies that I am hearing while I am mixing and such inside of the room. Acoustic paneling is going to be a little bit more expensive. Um, some websites will be in the description of places you can go, places that I have dealt with to get acoustic panels. You can also, if you are a DIY person, you can actually build your own acoustic panels. I am not, <laughs> so I did not do that, but you can go to your Home Depot or your Lowe's or your favorite hardware store, get you some wood, get some fabric, get some insulation, and you can actually build your own acoustic panels. Um, I'm sure that you can go and, and research uh, online some different tutorials and ways that you can go about doing that. The second thing that you're going to want to consider is what computer are you gonna be using in your home recording studio? Now, this is probably gonna be your biggest expense. If you already have a computer that is suitable, you can just use that and see how that works for you. But this will probably be the biggest investment that you're gonna make initially in your home studio. I personally would recommend that you go with a Mac over a PC. Several reasons for that, one of which has to do with the next um, tip that I have for you or next thing you're gonna wanna consider. But just right off the bat, Macs are just gonna be a little bit easier for you to maintain. There's gonna be less issues, less things to consider, a little bit more secure than a PC in my opinion and from my experience. If you are going with a Mac, the specific one I would recommend if you're just getting started is a Mac Mini. Um, the reason I'd recommend that would be it's on the lower end of the cost scale in comparison to an iMac and to a MacBook Pro. Um, and you can really load that thing down. You can put tons of RAM in there. You can upgrade the CPU. You can put even tons of storage in there. And it's going to be a very powerful machine. Now, it's not going to come with a monitor, so you need to have your own monitor. Uh, it's not going to be mobile. So if you need to do mobile stuff and you need to be on the go, then obviously a MacBook Pro would more so be the route that you want to take. Um, and if you don't want to buy a monitor and stuff like that, then maybe an iMac might be the route that you would want to take. In my studio, you can see I have a Mac Mini. It works very, very well for me. I'm able to do all of my audio things I need to do. And now it performs very well now that I'm doing all this video and visual stuff, uh, which I did not have in mind when I first bought the Mac Mini. It's handling all that stuff very, very well. So I would strongly recommend going with a Mac Mini. Now, the third thing you're going to want to consider is, since we're talking about computers, what software are you going to be using to do your recording or whatever it is that you plan on doing in your home studio. I would, and this is why I said I think Mac is the better way to go, because if you get a Mac, you can get Logic Pro X. And Logic Pro X is a great place to start. There are lots of different DAWs that you can use, but Logic Pro X does everything and it does everything very well. So if you're just getting started, I would strongly recommend getting into Logic. Logic Pro X is also on the lower end in terms of cost in comparison to other DAWs. It is only 200 bucks. And if you buy your Mac from the Mac store, you can most likely have them preload that software onto your device for you. So big plus there. Um, so I would recommend doing that. Now, if you're interested in other DAWs, card up in the top if you wanna see the different DAWs that I use. I do use Logic Pro, but I use other things as well. Uh, that video will kind of go through my workflow and show you some of the things that are there. But if you're just getting started, unless you are really married to Pro Tools or you know really married to like FL Studio or Studio One or some other DAW that you already have experience with, I would strongly recommend going with Logic Pro X to do everything that you need to do, at least to get you started. And then you might decide you wanna branch off into some other stuff. Okay, so we've treated our room, boom. We've got our computer, we are good with that. We've got our DAW that we're gonna be using. The next thing that you are gonna to want to invest in is something called an audio interface. And an audio interface's job is to translate what's going on in the real world into the computer and then translate from the computer back out into the real world so we can hear it, right? So like right now I'm talking into this microphone, I need a way to get this sound from the microphone into the computer. 
audio interface is going to do that. And then when I hit play, I need a way to get the sound that's in the computer back out into the real world through my speakers or my headphones so I can hear it. Basically, I need to be able to go from analog to digital and then from digital back to analog. My audio interface is going to do that for me. Here is an example of an audio interface right here, this guy right here. This is an audio interface. It's a very good starter audio interface by Focusrite. Now, I'm gonna give you guys, if you look in the description right now, you are going to see several links to some different studio setups you can possibly get. And it's gonna link you to shopping carts in, or wish lists rather, shopping lists on Sweetwater's website, which is an amazing place to get your gear, by the way. Um, they're not sponsoring this video, but maybe one day they will be. Um, I have a basic home studio setup. I actually have two basic home studio setups for you. I have a next level studio setup, and then I have just a money is not an object. I just want to buy stuff studio setup. And I'll go over those with you at the end of this video. But the point is, you'll see that audio interface in the basic home studio setup video. Now, the audio interface that I have is by a company called Universal Audio. It's the Apollo Twin. You can see it on screen right now. And that gives me the things that I need to be able to do. And it's, that one is also in one of the studio setups that I've given you. The main thing that you need to consider when purchasing an audio interface is how many inputs do you need? And by inputs, I mean how many sources do you need to record at the same time? The answer, if you're just getting started, is probably one, maybe two. You probably just have a microphone that you need to record yourself or another artist with. Maybe you need to record like a guitar or keyboard along with that artist. That's probably all you need at once, all right? But if you are a drummer, you're going to need to record more than two inputs at once, probably at least eight possibly up to like 16 at the same time, depending on how crazy you've gone with miking your drums, right? Or maybe you have a group of singers, or maybe you have a full band and you guys need to record. Well, that's gonna change the needs that you're gonna have for your audio interface, and that's gonna up how much you need to spend for your audio interface. So when we go over those different lists at the end of this video, I'll give you guys some ideas of some things that you can do. If you are doing a basic studio setup, but you need more inputs, I'll show you some things that you can possibly do there. All right, but your audio interface is extremely important. Also, when you're buying your audio interface, make sure that you pay attention to the connection type. Is it a USB audio interface? Is it a Thunderbolt audio interface? Just so you know if you need to get any kind of dongles or converters in order to connect it to the specific computer that you have. All right, so we've got our audio interface. The next thing we need is a way to hear what's going on, all right? So you are going to need some studio monitors or headphones or ideally both. Now, because it's a home studio, of course, you do need to be mindful of neighbors, depending on where you are, if you're in an apartment or just your family, <laughs> you know, you need to be mindful of neighbors and things like that. You also need to be mindful of your space. If you're not in a space that is closed in, um, having, you know, spending all kinds of money on super expensive studio monitors, that's not your biggest concern right now. You need to get into a better space. And so headphones might be a better way for you to start. You can see the monitors that I have are the Atom A7Xs. Those are not the monitors I started out with. I started out with the Rocket 5s, which I put into uh, the basic home studio package that you have. One of the things that you want to consider, which I didn't know <laughs> when I first bought my first studio monitors, was most of the time the price that you see is per monitor. All right, I went in Guitar Center. I said, I'm going to get me these rockets. I, I was looking at the price. I said, whoa, that's a lot cheaper than I thought. Let me get this bigger model or let me get, let me get some other stuff too. And I talked to the salesperson. He's like, yeah, nah, bruh, that's per monitor. So, oh, okay. So what we're going to do is put some of this stuff back <laughs> over here because I didn't, I didn't know, right? So now I'm telling you so that you know. Most of the time, unless it says pair, that price that you're looking at, if it says $150, that means for one monitor or one speaker. If you say monitor, monitor, speaker, right? For one, all right? So multiply that times two, and that's how much uh, it's going to cost you. You're going to need a microphone. You're going to need a microphone. you got to have some kind of way to record your voice. Now, if you don't plan on recording your voice, maybe you don't need one, right? If you're just a music producer and you don't plan on bringing other artists in and you don't plan on recording yourself, you don't sing or rap or, or do anything where you're going to be talking, maybe you don't need a microphone. But most likely, you're going to need a microphone. And uh, there are a ton of different microphones you can get 
to start. Now, the microphone I'm using right now is actually a microphone I would strongly recommend. It's in one of the carts. This is the Shure SM7B. This is a very common microphone. You have seen this before. If you've been on YouTube long enough, if you looked at podcasters or you know been in a recording studio, you've seen this microphone, all right? It sounds amazing and you can do a ton of stuff with it. This can be a really strong workhorse microphone. Now, it is gonna cost a little bit more than other microphones you could get, but if it's in the budget, I would recommend starting off right off the bat with something like this that is gonna last you just, it's gonna grow with your studio. You're gonna be able to use it to do all different kinds of things, all right? Along with your microphone, you're gonna need a pop filter. Uh, I don't have one on this microphone, I just have a shield on it, but a pop filter is something that is going to catch uh, all of your plosives, right? So the P's and B's and all that kind of stuff is going to kind of take that uh, and soften that so that you don't have all this heavy stuff going into your microphone. Those are very inexpensive. I pretty much put the exact same one in every single cart that I've given you. So you wanna make sure that you have a pop filter. Lastly, or second to lastly, if you're gonna be producing music, you need a MIDI controller. And I would say even if you're just gonna be singing, um, or working out songs, you wanna have a MIDI controller so that you can kind of peck out some parts or figure out keys or different things like that. Uh, there are different MIDI controllers that you can get. You ultimately do not have to get the biggest, most expensive MIDI controller. Um, you get one that suits your needs. I'll show you some examples uh, as we go through these carts in just a moment as well. And the last thing that you want to consider is all the miscellaneous stuff, all right? Cords and cables. Okay, look at your different speakers, look at your, your audio interface, look at the microphones you have, how many different cables are you gonna need to be able to connect everything, right? Inputs and outputs, stands, all right? All those different kinds of things, surge protectors to plug things into. These are the things sometimes people will forget you want to consider and allot some money in your budget for those things as well. All right, here we are, we're on Sweetwater's website, and I wanna go over these different lists that I have made for you. So I've got four of these guys. I got a basic home studio setup, a basic home studio setup with bundle, a next level home studio uh, setup, and a next level home studio setup with more channels, and then an ultimate home studio setup. So I've actually got five of them. I thought I had four, I've actually got five. Um, so let's just quickly go over these. So here's the basic home studio setup, right? If you are just starting out and you just need to be able to flesh out your ideas, record stuff, um, and it's mainly just you that you're recording, what have you, this is gonna get the job done. I've got a MIDI controller in here. Here's the pop filter. Um, I put in a microphone, the Audio-Technica AT2035. Now you can also get away with the AT2020. The reason I put this in here is because it's a large diaphragm condenser, so you can probably do a little bit more with it, and it does have a couple of uh, other things in here, such as a, a low cut filter and a pad that uh, can be useful to you um, as well. But if you wanna go with the AT2020, you can swap that in here. Again, like I said, if you have it in your budget to go for the SM7B, swap that in here as well. I'll show you the price of that in a little bit. The AT2020 is less than that. The SM7B is at least twice as much as this. So that's something to consider. Here's some nice uh, headphones. These are the headphones that I actually have uh, in my studio currently. Here are the Rocket 5s. I put two of them in there. So this is how much that would cost you. And then here is that Focusrite interface that I showed you. It's the Scarlet 2i2. Um, and it's going to get the job done for you. The Basic Studio with Bundle is the same setup except for the microphone and the audio interface, they actually came with bundles. And as a matter of fact, I'm realizing that with the Scarlet um, bundle, you actually don't need the microphone either. Now I put the microphone bundle in here too though, because that will give you two microphones to play around with. And it also comes with a stand and a pop filter and some cables. So it will kind of do those. But if you wanna not do that, you can take that out and subtract $239 from this. And um, that's what you'll get. So this audio interface bundle actually comes with headphones and it comes with a microphone. That's a good microphone as well. I don't have it personally, but I have recorded some people on it and I've heard what it sounds like. Sounds good, it's gonna give you a very good start. All right, let's look at the next level home studio setup. I've swapped in a different MIDI controller here that gives you a few more, or quite a few more faders and pads and different things that you can do. I swapped this MIDI controller in also because Artur Arturia 
say that 10 times fast, Arturia products also give you access to and license to use Arturia Synths and such. So there are a bunch of plugins and different things that will come with that. So that's cool. These headphones, I love these headphones. These are actually the first headphones that I had in the studio. I actually want to get another pair. These are very good, especially if you're in an environment where you're trying to mix and you don't have a closed-in space. These are very, very good. You can really trust these. Same pop filter, right? Here's the SM7B right here. Now, I put in a bundle here. It actually comes with two cables and a stand and something called a cloud lifter. The cloud lifter makes it so you won't have to crank your gain up as much. It really boosts your signal in a clean way. So that's there. But if you didn't want that bundle, you could just get the SM7B, and it's going to be about $400 or something like that, I believe. I've thrown in here a larger, more powerful studio monitor. You probably recognize these. These are the Yamaha HS7s. And um, these are, again, I only have one in here for some reason, 329 each, right? So let's go ahead and up that to two so that we can get the proper pricing for that. There we are, right? But this is a good monitor for next level. And then here is the Apollo Twin. I'll probably do a completely separate review on this. I love Universal Audio. As you can see, we're spending a bit, much, uh, a bit more money, but you are getting things that are going to put you in a position where you're not going to have to upgrade stuff right away. With the basic studio setup, it's getting you started, but you'll probably find in a couple years you're going to want to upgrade. Uh, this is going to give you a bit of a better starting point if it's within your budget. Now, I also have a version of this that allows for more channels. Uh, which means a different audio interface, right? But you can get the Focusrite Scarlett 18i20, and that is going to give you uh, eight inputs so you can record more things at one time. One of the things that you need to know about audio interfaces is that you can expand them, at least with the ones I'm giving you here, which is why I'm recommending these. Not with the, um, the 2i2, but with this Scarlet right here, and then also with the Apollo Twin, if you decide later that you need more channels, you can expand them using an optical or what we call an ADAT connector. I, that's actually what I'm doing here. You can see I have my Apollo Twin, and then here I have the Scarlet Octo uh, pre-expansion, right? Which is not an interface by itself, but I have it connected to my Apollo, and together I can use all those channels to record inputs at the same time if I needed to do so. So these are great audio interfaces, and that's why I'm recommending them because they can grow with you. And whenever you're buying gear, you wanna try your best to buy things and invest in things that can grow with you as you need to expand and do other things. All right, now, if you are here and you need more than this, you can also go with this option that I'll show you right here. This is the Behringer X32. This is great. Now, it's going to cost you a bit more, but this is going to let you get up to 32 channels of input. So this can really grow with you as you begin to expand. This is great also if you are going to need to do live sound. It serves as both an audio interface and also a live rig. So if you need to do live sound, you can use it as well. This is an option to swap into that package if you need more channels than the eight that the Scarlet is giving. And last but not least, here's the ultimate home studio setup. If you just want to drop some money on some stuff, you can do that. Here I've given you an 88 key MIDI keyboard here. Same pop filter, believe it or not. <laughs> Here's a different microphone. This is the Warm Audio WA87. This mirrors the Neumann U87, which is a very popular and very expensive classic studio microphone. Um, here I've given you the Atom A7Xs. These are the monitors that I have. That should be two, so let's upgrade that as well as the sub here, um, which you most likely will not need if you're just starting in the home studio, but if you've determined you do need a sub, um, here's one as well. This is the sub that I have. And then here is the Universal Audio Apollo uh, X8P. This is gonna give you uh, eight channels of input with eight preamps and all that kind of stuff. As you can see, we're spending a bunch more money here. Now, again, you can start swapping stuff in. You can say, hey, I wanna swap in the X32. I don't, I'm not married to Universal Audio. I'm gonna put the X32 in here instead. You can absolutely do that. You can swap stuff in and out, but these are just some ideas to get you started. All right, so I hope that that has been helpful to you and has given you an idea of where to start and what direction to go in to start building your own home recording studio. Leave some comments in the comment section and let me know 
uh, what routes you think you want to take or if you have questions about different pieces of gear or questions about some of the things that I'm using in my studio or what have you, leave those comments in the comment section and let me know. Share also if you've used any of the lists that I've given you and they worked out very well for you and you want to kind of offer a testimony, <laughs> you could do that as well in the comment section, guys. All right, it's been my pleasure sharing with you. I'll see you again soon.